particularly annoying to our our town group that um, this is dropped in value, not because they really get anything from the value. I guess if they were to sell the property, they would, um, but because they just put out put up so much money for it, and then now it's like what it would have cost them like two hundred fifty dollars instead of I don't know eight hundred dollars more. Um, what else is going on? Oh yeah. So Desi ended up on some news here, and that's going to get rid of one privately owned. And we'll just put that to the side because we I got to do a payout. And one cooperatively owned. So the co the so the cooperatively owned properties they're not going to do the ones with developments on them because it's nice to have, I guess. Um, it's right here, 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 and here, and here. They don't want to do anyone's workplace. Um, or house. This is supposed to be Desi's house, right? Yeah, so we need to mark that. I forgot to mark that. So probably one of these two commercial properties here. Um, this one would give them 200. This one would give them 300 because they only get half price from the sale. I think they'll go ahead and take the, the more money. Doesn't that make sense? Okay. After everyone helps Banana uh, buy these two properties for the group, um, they got hit by a tax, and that's really hurting our agitators here. And by agitators, I don't mean Vaughn in this case. She's not playing the Our Town game. 200 left for Hair Bear, 300 left for Desi. They are really on the edge. And remember, they can't get loans. These fellows could help them out. Anyone else could help them out, I suppose, though they probably don't have much of an incentive to do so. Who would have thought that Stubby would be so great with celebrities? But he just did a one-two celebrity prestige punch. First, he built a celebrity home right there, which let this um, vacant because of the garbage problem, uh, gray spot, uh, be inhabited by a five prestige marker. That's really good for Stubby. If you look down here, there's a lot of black cubes within that per that that marker's purview. Then this uh, this event came up, local celebrity which puts a six in a gray marker. So he decided, hey, why not just put it right there? He was planning on um, putting a, a money marker down there on his next turn if he was able to, but that he doesn't have to worry about that. So now he's got dominance in the six and five prestige zones. Also, he's the point leader. Those are the highest prestige things on the, the map right now. It worked out for him that they didn't move up to Metropolis because Metropolis would probably have, I'm assuming, some higher value prestige markers. No, no, actually, I think I'm wrong because look, four is the, the, the highest there. So yeah, well, it still worked out because that five marker wouldn't have been there. Our, our town players have been pretty risk averse for the round. Uh, the the Males don't have very much money, especially our agitators. They're pretty low. So they're just trying to get home and then go back to work uh, where they can get a pretty pretty good salary. Banana just collected on her salary. And then she got a special card. I don't know where I put it. Um, oh, here it is. Business trip and holiday taken. She got 300 extra after that. And she gets a little extra money because she actually owns her house. She doesn't own that shared with everyone else and then she gets to go to a space of her choice now if she goes to work which she's now eligible to do she doesn't um, by the rules of the card get her salary so she just wants to get close to work and then in her next turn she could probably take salary again so she's going to go right here so she doesn't have to she could even buy that if she wants to but she doesn't want to just go out and buy everything privately because that would probably upset her teammates our, our town players aren't the only ones who are poor. Giraffe is starting her turn now with only $1. Uh, she's got lots of little vocations. She's got lots of politicians in her pocket, and she has an armory up her sleeve. But she's not going to be able to play any buildings this turn, which is rough, especially considering her position at the back of the line. I did some playing without really filming for a while, so I just maybe you want to see the points there. There's the points. There's some buildings. Um, Stubby's been doing well. Anyway, so she's going to just have to take a bunch of these cards on her turn. Well, maximum of three. And then next turn, sell them, hopefully, or maybe hopefully get a payout um, and move from there. Since the deck's been shuffled, the local celebrity came up again. That was kind of tough on Stubby. He had to move it from here to here. He could have moved it to any space, but that was the only one he could figure that was really advantageous to him. 
And so he took it. So, you know, you might want to put it here. That would... Because then he would just be sharing that prestige with Giraffe rather than with Pinky. And then, you know, as long as he stays in the lead, that card will come up again after the deck gets reshuffled. And he can move it back to his favorite spot, which is right there. If you recall, once upon a time, this was the best area of town in terms of value, uh, which is a purely objective thing, value. But then a flood came, and it no longer was the best part of town. It, it descended down to, to here, to the center of town. It's kind of a story of, of that some cities do go through, like the center is the big part of town, the special part of town, and then people go out to the outsides, and that becomes special. But this is kind of reverse. It was the outsides are special, then the insides became special, and now it's going to be the outsides again. Um, Stubby put down a very special house. <laughs> I guess that house made everything along here zoom, worth a lot more. So this is going to be the, the high class area with 19 value versus we have an 18 value here. So there's still, you know, some still some some prestige to be gained from being in the not prestige in the objective sense, prestige in the subjective sense to be gained from being in the center of the town. Let's do a quick elections check in. Well, um, some of the big elections news is that the union boss has changed. So if you recall, it started the game. Well, it started when it came out with Stubby being our union box. He, he looked to be like our industrial guy. But since then, Stubby's kind of gotten into residential, horned in on Pinky on that, um, and also diversified into other areas. He's got some commercial buildings. You know, he's got kind of everything except for Civic. That's pretty much solely Giraffe's purview, although Pinky has drifted into Civic buildings. Um, and then Junior just popped down too. You know, one after another. And so then he had the most valuable one because he's in this valuable zone here. Uh, so he is now our union boss. That's a big change. He actually took it from Pinky, though, who had, who had done a little, like, political maneuvering to take it. She didn't actually have any industrial buildings. In case I, did, I wasn't clear about that, the union boss is given to the player with the most valuable industrial building. Um, Giraffe has managed to keep both of her titles, uh, her politicians and her pay, the mayor and the district attorney. So that's going to make for an interesting voting situation because we have two people who uh, who get two votes for the, the political side. One person who gets one, Pinky gets no say in that. So she's only going to be feeding into business. Another fun thing that Giraffe's been doing is she's had the mayoral power every time it goes around and she gets reelected as mayor or her candidate gets reelected. Um, she gets to pop down a, a park and that can allow her to kind of manipulate control a little more um, of, of different you know, rows because she can put the parks all over the place. And if she can keep them near where she is, then that's, that's pretty helpful too. Let's just add a turn and this building was purchased by the group, which prompts me to tell you about how they've kind of been using their group funds. These are their group funds here. I know that's Desi's guy, but yeah. Um, anyway, so rather than use it to just pay for buildings wholesale, they use it to um, make the price something equally divisible. This group is very strongly adhered to the idea that everyone should literally uh, quantitatively put in the same amount regardless of their circumstances. So on that purchase, Hare Bear, even though he's down to $300 and might go bankrupt, had to spend a hundred of his own money just the same as everyone else. Now it could have been someone would spot him or someone would be like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's just a hundred dollars. I have so much. I could just take care of it so that you're not in danger of death. Um, but that's not the way they're doing it. They have this very like that's that's their that's their way. So there we go. Big turn for for Junior. He managed to get both of um, Stubby's transport vocation markers. So he's the only one with vocation. Problem with transport is it's kind of easy come easy go. He used one card, a pawn shop, to get one of them, and the other one he got just by playing this card. Because if there's no transportation markers in the transportation bank or the vocation bank, then you just take it from someone else. And so Stubby had both of them now. Junior does. That was one really nice thing for him. Another nice thing for him is he got a butt ton of points. He's, he easily surpassed Pinky, and he's gaining on Stubby now. Uh, he, 
He played that bus terminal, which really helped him out. Gave him a couple vocations. He got to score on those vocations. Fortunately, he didn't have any of those. Pinky plopped down a coal plant right here, uh, which uh, gave her some points and also knocked points off of uh, pretty much everybody else, most of all Junior, which allowed her to regain second place and put her in spitting distance uh, with, with Stubby. Although I hope they don't, it doesn't come to that. Big turn by Giraffe, she put down this armory after putting down a public library. Kind of there's a balance there. You have a library, you have an armory. Um, and that combined, there was this kind of like alchemical reaction with, between the library and the armory, zoom, zoom, ley lines here, that gave her all these points. And now she's tied for first. I think it's anyone's game now. We're not seeing these long, this long tail of point spreads, which probably speaks as much to my own, like, I'm starting to understand the game more, right, uh, as well as these, these players do. You know, we're all kind of going along the same learning curve, aren't we? Our, our town players are getting several payouts as a result of slowly spreading their control over the city, their communal control over the city. That's not really bothering, you know, at first when I saw that I was thinking, oh, there probably should be some overt mechanism by which the um, urban sprawl players can can get rid of that control, but it's not really bothering them. They're, they have other ways of making money. Um, they are still getting payouts, however the urban sprawl players. So it could be that as the game goes on and the Our Town players spread out, it might be too much a piece of their pie. But I'm, I'm thinking that maybe it's less important to have money as the game goes on because really, you know, you need the points to win. You need money to get buildings, but if you can sell off these, these cards and, you know, a lot of these cards will give you a lot of money just for putting a card down or building a building. I don't know how big a deal it's going to be. If it starts to be um, too big a deal, it seems like it would be fair if they had a way to combat, but they kind of have a, a lot of power as is. So what I'm thinking of, this, this society is one in which there's this a different sort of federal law or a different sor sort of like state law or county law or, you know, something that's higher than the city government that is able to put this law into place where this communal, these um, communal co-ops and whatnot are, are uh, take sort of like public right away over privately owned property. But if that were the case, or, you know, whatever, I, maybe whatever developing firm they're a part of has a vested interest in selling that out, or maybe they have this law that they have to sell to to any sort of co-op or private owner as well. Um, so it's, it's, it gets kind of tricky when you try to stretch your mind to put some sort of real world framework over this monstrosity. I tell you, Hair Bear has been having the hardest time getting to work. He's got the slow, the, the shortest commute, I believe, but he's just rolling threes and twos and he really can't afford to land on anything because he doesn't know if his people are going to back him up on buying the property cooperatively. So he's you know, having to hug the coastline here and just kind of inching along. Almost to work now. Almost to work. Okay, here is our score with the urban sprawl people. Everyone here in our town is pretty much above water trying to get to work or trying to get home. That's kind of what they're trying to do. But soon they're going to need to, to start renting things out and developing fast, especially uh, by renting, I mean taking it over as a group. I don't know why I thought that was what the word renting means, but it can for now, um, but now it doesn't. Um, this card turned up, so they need to, you know, if, if they're gonna let it go into the next round, they really need to be thinking about ramping things up. They need to have like 29 different developments on the map, and Right now they only have, looks like four or five. That might be uh, taken into consideration for our voters, at least as part of the Our Town people. Um, let's see, the, the city's game people, what are they looking at? There's the rewards they're kind of going over. It's 20,000 business, 20,000. So business slum dwellers, government not so much. And government in the next one, not so much. So government really wants to, the town to stay small for the most part and just try to get money that way. Um, let's see what our issue is going to be, and then I'll probably sign off.
for now. It's blank. Or it's blank. Or it could be a blank one or fair housing. Government proposes new fair housing bylaws to end racial and religious discrimination. Okay, I think we can work with that. Next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitary Mega Tournament, Tri-City, working title, English leg 3.3. .3.